one thing that I've been dealing with all my life and that I've always been afraid to share online is loneliness. So this is a video of what it's like feeling alone, even when you still have people around you who love you. First of all, I just wanted to say that I've always been struggling to make friends, or at least new friends. I've always had a small, very tight circle in high school, in primary school, never had like a humongous friend group, maximum like eight boys in our high school friend group. And it was fun while it lasted <laughs> until we graduated. And then that's pretty much it. We broke up and I only hang out with a few of them these days barely to be honest and now in university is it's even harder to make friends because you know everyone's just anti-social but yeah the point is i've always struggled to make friends and i think it's the fact that i am used to pushing others away whether it's my closest friends and family like i always tend to be very introverted with them as well like i used to socialize and talk to people only if it's necessary and that is a very bad trait to have and as the years went by i eventually just you know got used to it I, I got used to pushing others away. And I also think a lot of that has to do with the fact that I am a very judgmental person. <laughs> For example, in public, I think a lot of people can relate to this. We all judge people by, you know, how they look and how they act. It's either if you don't check off my boxes, then we can't be friends. You know what I mean? And it's very toxic. A very specific example is if you're not Asian, we can't be friends. You know, it's, it's still to this day, it's very, very toxic, but I'm just, just putting it out there. Maybe it's because I love Asians a lot and I love the culture and, you know, um, I'm very attached to my ethnicity. I think it's a very big problem because it relates a lot with lonely people because at the end of the day, loneliness is a choice. We make decisions that tend to make ourselves more lonely. But at the same time, like, no one is actually perfect, and perfectionism can be very, very toxic, especially in social situations. Now, I've always been that type of guy. Additionally, I've always been very self-centered, like, I've lived in my own world for a while now. Most of the time, I'm actually very comfortable with that. Like, I'm very comfortable with my thoughts, comfortable with, you know, talking to God, praying alone and eating alone, reading books alone, working alone. Like, I'm just comfortable doing that. I've always been doing that but there's moments and i think everyone can relate to this watching this video where it gets really really lonely like you just feel like no one else can understand you no one can relate to you at all no one likes you and then you just tell yourselves these negative affirmations again and again and you fall down this deep rabbit hole of low self-esteem so in most cases being too self-centered is is a very bad thing and that's one of the biggest problems in the self-improvement space as well. We tend to focus on ourselves a little bit too much to the point where, you know, we kind of victimize ourselves and ask, why am I so lonely? Why am I like this? Why does no one like me? I have a six pack. I have a great physique. Um, you know, my personality is great. I'm driven, I'm motivated, but why does nobody like me? Why am I still alone? And it's like, no wonder because you're, you're too judgy. You're too self-centered. You only care about yourself and you, you're just used to pushing others away. And then all of those symptoms leads to another system where we get used to being alone. We, we get used to being in our own bubble. The thing that I'm personally afraid of these days is what if I'm too used to being alone and what can that lead to? I think everyone knows that there's a lot of lonely men out there and the symptoms of that can lead to very dangerous characters. And I'm just afraid of what kind of person I would become if I keep on pushing people away and being too judgmental and being too self-centered and just being used to being alone. It, it's, it's very frightening for me to think about what the future holds if I keep this up. Now, another symptom of being alone is the lack of self-worth that we have for ourselves. This is a pretty big one because uh, no one really likes to admit it, but it's very, very true. I only recently found out that, you know, the past few years of high school and university have been just me hating myself a lot and just being such a perfectionist. Whether it's my physique, my mentality, my spirituality, I just wanted to be the perfect person I could be. And the big lesson is that that is completely impossible. We are just bound to be imperfect. But one of the biggest actionable steps that I took recently is talking to God. Now I just have conversations with him alone when no one else is around because I can be so open and deadly honest with him because he already knows what's going on. So there's no point hiding anything. So any insecurities or any struggles that I'm going through, I can just bring it up and he can be my accountability partner. 
Now, I obviously do this to develop my relationship with God, but also to avoid that self-hatred, which can lead to bad habits. Because at least for me, when I feel a lack of self-worth, I tend to do some really stupid shit. You tend to look at yourself differently with the stupid things that you do and the addictions that you, you know, get used to. I think all of those bad habits that we all practice, or we, at least we used to practice, is rooted from one single source, which is self-hatred. Yeah, it's been a tough one to crack so far, especially this year, I've really realized what all of this means. And I've only just came to a realization about self-love and self-hatred and the difference between the two and how all of these are just the root of all my problems in my mental health. But at the end of the day, it's a day by day journey, you know, because before all of this, I used to really feel sorry for myself a lot. And I loved doing that. I really loved victimizing myself. It felt good for me to just, you know, cry my eyes out because I feel lonely or oh, why am I like this? It's very silly because it's not God's fault that we're lonely, it's our fault. You know, it is a choice. It's a big choice that we make because we go out there in public expecting to have some fun, but we always have our judgmental glasses on, our low self-esteem mindset, and just a little sensitive bitchy personality within us that we carry every single time we meet others. And like, people can sense that off of you. People can tell from my face because I walk around with an RBF, which means resting bitch face. And it's a problem, but I'm trying to fix it now. <laughs> Throughout high school, I've always been doing that. It's very, it was so obvious. Like, you can tell that I was fucked up. <laughs> the more you understand that you are deliberately being alone, the more you are willing to take action to not be alone. But it is hard. I can't, I, I'm trying to take action like these days, at least for the past couple of months, I've been trying to take action myself. And I have to admit, it is it is very hard for me because I used to be such a lonely motherfucker. And honestly, I still feel like that. I'm also impatient with these things. I don't want to stay lonely forever, which is why I'm trying to rush the process, but it doesn't work like that. Good things honestly really do take time. But as long as we get out of this never ending cycle of victimization, judging people, low self-esteem, self-hatred, then we can finally take those little baby steps to improve. And I think the one word that solves all of these problems is love. As cringy as it sounds, we are put on this earth to love and that is it. You know, to love our families, to love our friends, to love every other human being in this world. And the most respectable form of love is the love for ourselves. And that is probably the hardest form of love to learn and practice every single day because we never really figure it out. We never figure out how to love ourselves or how to stop feeling alone. It's just a day by day journey of getting better and better. And then eventually we die without figuring everything out, without having all the answers. And that is okay because we know that we tried and we know that we lived a life without regrets. And that is the goal for me, you know? So the answer is love, but there you go.